Hello, my name is Giori Politi and today I'm going to talk about designing the audio-based game mechanics and some accessibility features in the game Blind Drive. So just a few words about myself. I'm a sound designer based in Tel Aviv, working mostly on games, VR and AR experiences, animation videos and interactive installations. I'm a co-founder and member of Lofi People, which is an art and technology collective who creates playful and unconventional digital experiences. In many of my sound design projects, I'm trying not only to support the experience with audio, but to bring the audio to the center of the experience. I went all in on this approach in the game Blind Drive, which I created with my fellow game developer, D.A. Ter. Blind Drive is a black comedy adventure meets fast-paced arcade gameplay driven by a crazy B-movie plot inspired by Tarantino and Wes Anderson films. We worked on the game for quite a long. The original idea was actually to create a site-specific installation where you sit in a real car dashboard and feel how easy to drive a car without seeing a thing. After a few experiments, we felt the concept was really fun and exciting, and we decided to turn it into a video game. At the time, we weren't really aware of the genre of audio games. For us, it was just about creating a video game that happened to have most of its gameplay based on sound. But nothing was too strict there. So some of the tutorials were graphic based and some of the UIs lack representation via sound. During the development process, we notice we are starting to get a lot of interest from visually impaired and blind gamers. So we contacted a few and started to run playtesting sessions and we realized that the game is really close to being completely accessible for blind players as it is without too many modifications. So with the help of the community, we fixed all the loose edges. On the game side, it was mostly meant to make the UI, life status, etc. represented by sound and make the voice acted tutorials clearer and more precise so there will be no need for visual cues. And the other thing was to make the menus accessible with text-to-speech and that was mostly it. So before I dive in with some game mechanics example, I will play a short trailer for those of you who doesn't know the game. Donnie here. Start driving. What the hell? Wait, hey! You made life insurance! <laughs> what the? The windows? Really? I was worried you'd catch a cold. In the game, you play as Donny, who signed up for a scientific experiment, but quickly find himself over his head, forced to drive a car while blindfolded and chained to the steering wheel. So he has to survive the road using only his ears. You play the game from Donny's point of view, behind the steering wheel, so most of the sounds and falling in the game were recorded with a binaural microphone setup. It's basically a dummy head with a microphone in each ear and it gives a very realistic sound recording. There are some graphics in the game, but they don't give the player any information or help with the gameplay. They only serve as atmospheric purpose. It's kind of like where in traditional video games you have a supporting soundtrack. Here the sound is the center and we have a supporting video track. I think also the use of visual helped us to get more mainstream players that would usually not play audio based games. And in general, I feel the audio game developers should not completely ignore the visual aspects, leaving just a black screen, but treat audio games just as regular games with the focus shifted towards the audio. 
Okay, so let's go into some mechanics. The basic mechanic of the game is that you drive against traffic in the middle of a two lanes road. Cars are coming in the left or in the right lane and you have to hold to the opposite side in order to avoid them. This is quite a simple straightforward arcade mechanic. It would be very easy to understand if we would use graphics, but without when you have to paint the whole scene and the interaction with sound alone, it gets a bit more complicated. So what did we do here? First of all, precise sound design that really puts you in the driver's seat of a fast riding car. So having all the elements such as the car's engine, the tire roll on the asphalt, the wind howling in the windows, small bumps on the road, etc. But what really made this believable is the foley sounds. Small movements in the chair, the cuffs, chains rattling when you use the controls and some other moving stuff in the car. The second thing here is clear and precise sonic feedback for your controls. Every time you hold the key or using your gamepad, you hear a sharp tire skid sound. Now, this is not so realistic and much exaggerated sound, but it was needed here in order to be clear. When you release the key, you hear another skid sound for getting back to the center, which emphasizing the arcade mechanic. And again, adding a folly sound of the steering wheel really helped with immersion. As for the enemies, the cars, a very clear, distinct and iconic sound with a clear approach ramp so you really hear when they're getting close and pass you. Again here, this is semi-realistic and exaggerated in terms of levels, the approach ramp and the direction of the sound, but it must be that way in order to be playable. Shoulder, shoulder indication to mark the limits of the game scene. If you hold for too long to one side, you start drifting off the road and hear some dirt and rumble sounds, then some impacts and then if you don't release, you crash. Now, the only missing information to the player here is to let them know that their basic position is in the middle of the road between the two lanes. Some player somehow gets it intuitively, but we didn't want to leave room for any doubt, so here we use the voice acting. In a certain part of the story, very naturally, the kidnapper tells Donnie on the phone, just drive straight in the middle of the road between the two lanes, uh, blah, 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 blah. Voice acting helps to deliver a more complex information to the players and it can replace graphical tutorials and UI indications. The trick is to incorporate the informative parts in the script so they won't sound too didactic and will integrate organically into the story. So let's hear how the basic mechanic sounds in the game. Every time you get hit, you will lose a life. If you get hit three times, you crash. Sometimes you can get life back. So to keep the player informed with how many lives left, of course, sighted player can look at the dashboard and see the UI indications. But we also added a small ping alert sound that plays every time you get hit, indicating the remaining life. To keep these sounds within the card sound language, we used an alert sound like the one you hear when you leave your lights on. And another continuous indication for your life status, which is more gentle, is increasing in rattling and suspension car sounds. This is how this indication sounds like. So a few variations on this basic mechanic in the game includes driving with the windows closed, so all the sounds are now muffled. A less clear and sharp enemy's sounds impacts the difficulty, the difficulty quite a lot, and it's, it, it is harder to play like this. 
What's nice about this variation is you can now hear very clearly all the folly sounds, the driver's movement in his chair, his breathing, the cuffs rattling, etc. In order to mix this right and precise, we used low pass filters on each sound layer independently. So we have maximum control and we could emphasize the important gameplay related information. This is how this level sounds like. What the? Hey! The windows? Really? I was worried you'd catch a cold. Another variation is driving with the radio on. The music distracts you and it's harder to hear the cars through the blasting radio. In this one we use quite an aggressive sidechain compression, so every time a car enemy plays it's ducking the music so you could hear it. It somehow feels like you have a super hearing. Other variation on this includes driving through a tunnel, so there is a long reverb that blends everything together, driving in the rain, so you have to listen carefully through the rain, the windshield wipers and many water splashes sounds. And another one is driving off-road, so you have dirt and rumble sounds, and now your enemies are not cars, but animals and some tractors. And driving underwater. So your car becomes kind of a submarine and your enemies are now dolphins, whales, torpedoes, etc. Another aspect of the game is bonuses. In our case, these are cyclists and ice cream trucks you have to hit that gives you huge power ups. So now you not only have to avoid every sound you hear, but you have to listen to the content of the sound itself and make a decision if to avoid or to hit it. This adds another layer of difficulty. Here's one example. After some time in the game with these basic mechanics, we wanted to introduce some new gameplays. So we went for boss fights. The first boss in the game is the police. It's built after some bosses in classic games such as Mario or Zelda or the more recent Cuphead. So this is how it works. In a certain part of the story, the police find you and start driving just behind you. Regular cars still coming from in front and from time to time the police tries to attack you from the side and take you off the road. When they're on your side, you have short time window to try and hit them before they hit you. It's a short window of about half a second. Two things that helped deliver these mechanics were the use of loud and clear police siren sound so you really hear when you, it's on your side and can easily differentiate it from regular passing cars and the, the use of voice acting from the police megaphone. So each time before he attacks, he says a sentence such as, pull over, so it will be clear he's about to attack. This is how it sounds. <laughs> yeah, take that. Again, some visual effects here, but they don't give you any indication on the police attack, it's only for the atmosphere. In the police level we came across this issue. 
What is the difference between the sound when the police car hits you, which is negative, and the sound when you hit the police, which is positive? They are both car impact sounds. So after a few experiments, we solve it like this. Hit intensity and sharpness. So the positive hit when you hit the police sounds rounder and softer, and the negative hit where you get hit by the police is sharper and more intense. The second thing that help is the tire skids and rattling sounds, which are, more, are much more intense in the negative version. Let's hear it, this is only the impact slayer. This is the positive version. And the negative one. Much more intense. Another thing we added to make this even clearer is a layer of positive bleep sound only in the positive hit version. And the last thing on top of this, so you won't have any doubts what just happened, is using the voice acting of Donnie, amplifying the situation. This is how everything sounds together. The positive version. Gotcha! And the negative one. Hey, cut it out! Another common mechanic in the game is dodging gunshots. And this is all about reflexes. Gunshots in the game can come from all kinds of directions. And the thing here is to move to any other place other than the one you're at when you hear the gunshot. In real life, if you hear a gunshot, and I hope you don't, you have just a few milliseconds until it hits you. In the game, there is about 400 to 500 milliseconds, depends on which difficulty you play, from the moment you hear the gunshot until it hits you. Half a second sounds quite a lot, but in the context of the game, it's really just the right amount of time you need in order to hear the gunshot, react quickly and survive them. To fill in the dead time after each shot, we added the shot whiz sound. And another difficulty aspect here is how far is the shooting gun. When they are far, the sound is softer and less sharp. So it's a bit harder to hear and react. But we limited the maximum distance so it will never get too soft. So here's an example. In this case, this was another boss you have to beat, but this mechanic repeats in a few different places in the game. Another small mechanic in the game is based on the combination of quick speech comprehension and reflexes, the GPS level. Here, your kidnapper puts the GPS on to guide you through some sharp turns. It's, it starts quite simple with the GPS just telling you to turn left or right, and you have to make this turn. After a while, the GPS starts teasing you, tries to confuse you, and gives you driving instruction really quick and at the last moment before the turn. So again, you have to react really quick and don't have time for any mistake. It's also quite funny level. Here's a bit. Turn right. Turn left. How about right? The other right. Let's turn left. Turn right. Why do I even bother? Turn left. Turn right. Wrong. By far the most difficult mechanic in our game to design and to play as well was the last boss in the game, the chopper. In this scene you drive in the bad guy's headquarter your grandma is on the car's roof holding a bazooka rocket launcher, and apart from regular enemies on the road, there is a chopper circling around your head, trying to take you down with a machine gun. Now you have a certain, certain time windows where the chopper is out of ammo, 
and going far for reload and then you have to chase him off road and your grandma tries to take him down with her bazooka rocket launcher. This level was much inspired from, Tar from Tarantino's death proof movie ending scene and I'll show you a short bit. So the main difference between designing sound for a film and audio based game is that in an audio game you can change the listener perspective so easily and can make drastic cuts in the level of different object because the player will lose orientation. So what helped to deliver this scene was firstly a precise three dimensional mix. So each sound will have its own position in the 3D space. So the player will be aware of where, th where things are very precisely. Plus pacing the action over time so they won't overlap and each detail will have its own spot. Also prioritizing the important gameplay information and ducking the less important layers help to clean the mix. And lastly, here as well we use quite a lot of voice acting from the bad boss and from grandma on the roof to guide the player with what they have to do. This is how this scene sounds like. While playtesting the game, we found it was really hard to anticipate how good one will be in playing an audio based game. No specific skill set could give us a prediction of how one will succeed in the game. We saw a huge range of reaction to the difficulty. Some people that the game was really easy for them and didn't get hit at all, to people that felt the game was really hard. That's why we ended up doing three different difficulty levels for the game, plus we added the option to skip a level after a few crashes, so players won't get frustrated if they have a hard time with a certain level. The aspects that impacted the difficulty the most and the ones we end up tweaking for the different difficulty levels were pacing, so how fast enemies are coming at you, and still no overlaps, this is an hard rule, every important gameplay information has to have his own spot. Sound density. Although our brain can process many sounds together, it's harder to distinguish and not get distracted by unimportant information. So there's a limit on how much background sonic details we can load at our player. So more information mean harder to play. And sound clarity. So enemies or other gameplay information should sound clear, iconic and precise. If you make an enemy sound softer or less sharp, it has a straight impact on the difficulty. And last one, mix. The level of the different elements and the balance between the gameplay information and the background atmospheric information. For an example, on the easy difficulty, of course, everything is slower and you have more time to react, but also the background noises and sounds are softer and the enemies' sounds are louder, plus they are panned wider to the sides, so it will be much clearer to notice. We found there is one axis which is on one side playability 
and on the other side, immersion. If you go too much towards immersion, so the, exp the experience is not playable at all, it sounds cool, but not playable. And if you go too much towards playability, you will lose immersion and realism. So the real key is somehow to find the sweet spot between those two in order to create a powerful and interactive experience. So that was all for today. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any question or a comment, please feel free to reach out by email or on Twitter. Ciao and have a great day.